I've been here before. September 2017, my Plex server that runs off of Unraid was having issues and I traced it down to the SSDs. At the time I was running SanDisk 500 gigabyte SSDs, two of them to be exact, both of which failed. And from there I just started hating SanDisk and I went with the old tried and true Samsung drives, SSDs that I have used for a very long time in many, many different builds and have never actually had one fail. So the fact that I am making this video today is, I don't want to say embarrassing, but it's, it's, it's hard to, to do, but let's be real. I mean, secretly, I, I'm kind of just hoping that it's not what I think it is and it's something else. You know, I know last time it was what I thought it was, but this time I'm really hoping it's not. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Buy My Bits, and in today's video I am talking about my, my main server, Zeus Plex. It's having issues. I'm ha I, I didn't get screenshots of it, so I wish I could show you, but I can't. Pretty much I was having this thing where it would not transcode any relevant media. It would transcode some, but like certain things with certain codecs, it would not transcode. So I did a lot of different uh, troubleshooting steps. I used a different build of Plex. Like there's the, the Unraid, actual Unraid repository for it, and there's a different repository for it. So I switched them around, changed them, and they all came back to the same end result was sometimes things would transcode and sometimes things would not. So specifically like an old TV show I have, let's say Star Trek, The Next Generation, I could transcode that all day and it was encoded with H.264, but something new that I would add that maybe let's say was H.265, for example, would not transcode anymore. So I was running into this issue and that's not exactly, you know, H.264 and H.265, like it's not just those. There's a lot more complexity to the problem, but the gist of it was is some things would transcode and some things would not. So last time this happened, it was actually a bad SSD, meaning that I could uh, read the data from the SSD, which was okay, which is good. I get my data off of it, didn't lose anything, even though I run backups, but still, it was good because I was still able to get things off of that SSD. I just could not write anything to it. It was half dead, which was good, I guess. Didn't die all the way. But that SSD didn't last very long at all. And that's why I was like, I'm never using SanDisk again. So I put a Samsung in there. Not this one, but in today's video, <laughs> I'm gonna put another Samsung in there. But I hope that today's video is not my Samsung SSD failed. I hope today's video is more like, I'm not entirely sure what's wrong, but Samsung is still awesome. I, th I think, I think that's what I'm going for. So here's a plan of attack, guys. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take apart, well, I'm not gonna take apart. I'm going to take the lid off of my main server, Zeus. I'm going to take the old Samsung 850 SSD, it's the 850 Evo, out of the system. The one that I had running, utilizing the program for Unraid called Unassigned Devices. I had that one running solely for the purpose of Plex metadata. That's it, that's all it did. It handled the poster arts, the information about videos, like TV shows, movies, things like that, thumbnails, etc. That's all it did. Transcoding was done, is done with the RAM, not the SSD itself. It's all just the metadata. This is Zeus. I'm gonna use a shotgun mic because I kind of want you to get the sense of how loud it is. And this is relevant because if, and I stress this, if this Samsung SSD is having issues, I don't think it's the SSD, maybe even possibly, potentially, maybe the sand disk wasn't terrible. Maybe it was a cooling thing. I don't know. But this is how loud it normally is. Hmm. Spare uh, four terabyte red drive. Pretty clear just in case one of my old four terabyte drives fell, but uh, hasn't happened yet. So it just collects dust. And this is remnants of shucking. I need to throw this thing away. Yeah. 
Okay, so I usually keep the monitor on top of here because I kind of bounce back and forth between my uh, Blue Iris server and Zeus. So just in case I need to plug in and see what's actually going on from you know the the video port itself, I have the monitor there. I don't use it for any, it's old. It's like a VGA connection and it's compatible with you know this old thing. So also, you know, some people they would say, Jason, you should turn your your server off before you mess with it, and I don't agree. Like, I'm not like, you know, gonna be a rebel and be like, look how awesome I am because I do things wrong. I really just don't agree with that. You see, there's there's a lot of servers out there that admin, system administration, like have to mess with while they're live and not bring them down. Okay, this is a thing. It's a thing. I'm not a system admin, so I can't back that up, but I'm fairly certain it's a thing. What's not a thing is that this thing is too thick. It won't go in the hole. So. If you don't know me, or you've never seen the inside of the server, you should look away now because you may get triggered, maybe. So this is how I currently have my SSDs. Pretty much, they're just free floating because there's really nowhere to put it. They are directly plugged into the motherboard through a SATA port right over here. So there's no RAID control or anything there. It's just all directly plugged in with the SATA cable but these three SSDs, one is used specifically, this top one, this Intel one is specifically used just for virtual machines. And then one or two of these is my cache, the other two is the Plex. And now that I think about it, I have absolutely no idea which one's the Plex drive and which one's the cache drive. So this might be a guessing game. Haha, <laughs> look at this, look at this. Old Jason is smart Jason. Oh, that never happens. I don't know if that'll focus or not, but you see that? It says cash on there. That's awesome. That means old Jason actually labeled these. Old Jason is amazing. I like old Jason. Well, I learned two things today, um, <clears throat> three things. One, old Jason was smart enough to label drives, even though after I really thought about it, I could always look up the serial numbers in Unraid, so it really doesn't matter, so I'm not labeling the other one. Second thing is, the fans, the you know things that spin and move, they hurt when you stick your pinky in it. So I knew that, but I was freshly reminded of that. And three, for some reason, actually I know exactly why, probably noise reduction, exactly for noise reduction, I utilized a Noctua, um, it's, it's like a noise reducer, it's just a voltage reducer to reduce the uh, voltage or the RPMs on the CPU uh, fans themselves. So I used that noise reduction filter on the CPU fans, making them quieter, everything ran good, and I don't really think I ever had any issues with heat overall when it comes to the CPU, but it was probably not a good move and I just went ahead and plugged them into the motherboard. I have no idea why I didn't do that the first time, but um, I'm sure that in my head it made total and complete sense at the time. So. But now we have the new Samsung drive. This is the 960 that I just put in. This other one over here is the 950. That's the cache drive, should still be good but I have everything temporarily held on that. So I got to copy that over to here. Um, I had the fans plugged in to the back plate here and then used the noise reduction to go to the CPUs. Again, don't know why I did that. So I just went ahead and plugged those directly into the motherboard right there. That way, hopefully 
if everything starts getting heated up, then you know it'll just ramp it up. It doesn't really matter if it's loud because it's not right next to me anymore. So I think that's why I did it the first time. Because this thing was like right next to me and it was super loud. So yeah, you know, whatever. It is very possible that maybe there's heat issues going on with this whole SSD felling if the SSD felled. But I have this thing sitting right behind the fans and I have them prepped away to where they're getting a lot of airflow. More airflow than what uh, the SSDs, even my main computer, get. So I don't think it's an issue with airflow just based off of how close they are to those fans and how much uh, wind they're actually getting. So yeah, it shouldn't be dying because of heat. So I replaced the SSD. I kind of circle them back a little bit. Thankfully, I labeled them. But also, if you are doing this, just check the serial numbers if you do have access to the serial numbers uh, hardware-wise. In this particular situation, it would have been nice if I did not label them. But I got it replaced, and I went back into PuTTY, you know, SSH into the server. I copied everything over from my cache drive. Um, that was basically my working Plex media directory, that, that metadata directory. Copy that over. That took a little bit to do. I think it took about 20 minutes minutes, maybe 30 minutes. I didn't really actually look, but it is about 20, 30 minutes. It's about 265 gigabytes total in size, which is kind of large, mainly because I have thumbnails enabled on my server. So, you know, if you're one of those people who maybe don't want a very large library, or maybe even you don't have a big enough SSD and you're running into issues, that is a, a little pro tip there. Those thumbnails they can really eat up some space. Of course, I'm talking about the thumbnails that you get that are generated by the Plex Media Server automatically. So like as the video is playing, it'll kind of show you in the preview screen where it's at, or if you hover over your mouse over the timeline, you can also see a thumbnails anyways. Anyways, random little tangent, moving on. Or as Jay would say, but I digress. Now, while I was getting everything moved over, I plugged in the old 850 Samsung SSD into the computer and ran a few tests. And by all right, that SSD is still good. I ran multiple speed tests, used the Samsung Magician software itself to test it, plus used two other benchmarking tests. I copied you know, data to it and from it, and the integrity was still there. I was able to stream uh, large video files from that SSD. I mean, I did all the stress testing I could possibly do to utilize that SSD. SSD and, and it worked flawlessly. Like, I don't have any idea why it would be failing or how it would be failing in any way based off of the results that I got from my test. And keep in mind, I actually plug this in through a USB adapter. It's a little SATA SSD adapter that plugs into USB 3.0. I still got amazing speeds. It still performed really well. As far as I can tell, this SSD is still golden, still good to go. However, that does not explain why when I put in this new 500 gigabyte SSD, copied everything over, and then went back into Plex, the configuration through Unraid and assigned the new SSD metadata directory to Plex to utilize that new directory and the new SSD, everything works exactly like it should. I'm able to apply every kind of video file and I'm able to transcode everything and it just, it works exactly how it's supposed to. So. I am not 100% sure, and this is another one of those videos where I like I get into and I'm like, I want to make this and, you know, kind of allow people to follow along my troubleshooting and, and know what was wrong and maybe post like a solution to it. But at this point, it's like my solution was replacing it. And I don't know if I needed to. And I know I already said this, but I'm gonna kind of recap this just a little bit, kind of so I could sort it out in my head too. Basically, I had a conversion failed. A required codec could not be installed. Also, I went back and turns out I did find a, a screen capture of the error that I had. This didn't happen to all videos, but it did happen to some. So I was specifically seeing on things like H.265 and, and Telesync files, for example. Those are the ones that I get from live DVR recordings from my, my uh, digital antenna. Part of my troubleshooting step included reinstalling Plex using different repositories for Plex, uh, uninstalling it completely and wiping a bunch of different folders that I didn't need in the Plex media server uh, file itself, and then reinstalling Plex and trying it again. And then I put it in or SSH into the server and I copied everything from the Plex, the dedicated Plex SSD over to my uh, Samsung cache SSD, which is exactly the same drive. I mean, they're two different drives, but the same type of drive. And as soon as I moved everything over, I reassigned Plex to that new, that new cache SSD that was temporarily holding all of the Plex data, everything started working perfectly. So this to me was like, 
Okay, well, maybe I have an issue with the SSD. After all, the SAN disk that started failing, and I mind you, this is a, they failed in the exact same way where it was able to read, it wasn't able to write, I was able to get my data off of it successfully before it crashed out and, and like completely, but that's how it acted. It was giving me this whole conversion failed error in Plex. And this is why I went through and replaced that. So I ran it off the cache drive temporarily until well, I actually stopped being lazy and decided to swap the SSD out until today. And then when I copied everything over back from the uh, cache drive to the new SSD, everything's working again. My theory here is that I did an update. This all, if I remember right, this all kind of sort of started happening when I updated Unraid. Uh, not necessarily when I updated Plex. It, I think it happened when a newer major revision, I think, I want to say 6.5, I can't remember the exact one, a new version of Unraid came out that was a GUI change, and it was kind of a big change for Unraid, and that's when I updated, and that's about, if I remember right, that's about when I started having these problems. And I'm not saying that it was the update, and I'm not even 100% sure this is the problem started exactly when I did this update. All I know is that it was an update of some sorts, whether it was Plex or it was Unraid, and I think it had to do with something with permissions. Now going back to me knowing just enough to break something, there is a command through SSH that you can use, a chown or chown I call it, or however you're supposed to say it, but chown where you can change recursively all of the permissions in a folder and all subfolders included with it. So you can change that to, you know, if let's say there are permission errors on certain folders and files, you can change all of them, you know, all in one swoop. And that can be a way, it can be a solution to fix an issue if it was a permission issues. But I know how to break it. I'm just not sure if what I'm gonna do is actually gonna be the right thing. So I could chone the whole thing and just mess it up completely. You know, maybe some folders don't require the same ones as others. I really, I could look into it. I just, I don't know. When you already have one SSD fail and everything points to it, Sometimes you bypass certain troubleshooting steps because you think, well, this is a relapse of the last episode. So I'm just going to dive right in to swapping out this SSD and just assume that this is the culprit. But in reality, this SSD that I just took out of this, this 850, still performs really well. It does everything really well. It has no smart errors. It has no issues that I can tell uh, from my test on my main computer. So re there's no reason for it to have acted up. This had to have been something like a permissions issue. And maybe copying, the, and again, I don't know this much about you know Linux and stuff, but maybe copying it over fixed some of those permissions. Maybe there's something in there that's a little wonky or whatever that copying those files over fixed. But either way, I copied it on my cache, copied it back to the new SSD, and everything works perfectly. So. so I'm gonna go ahead and just make this video and upload it and leave it up to the audience. If you guys have ran into this issue and you maybe have an idea of what this could have been, especially seeing that this SSD is still good, but for some reason copying those files from one location to another fixes it, let me know down below what your ideas are because I would really like to make a more uh, focused video on this. Say, hey, this is a very specific issue that I had and this is how to fix it. So uh, if you guys run into something like that, let me know. I think before I wipe this SSD, I want to probably maybe one of these weekends put that SSD back into the, the Zoo server and then try to troubleshoot those steps with the SSD that was messing up or at least the, full, the files on that SSD, and then see if I could walk through those steps. So I'm kind of looking toward or forward to, you know, maybe getting some ideas before I wipe this SSD, some troubleshooting steps, someone who might say, hey, you should have done this, should have done this, should have done this, because I still have that old SSD and I would like to go back, maybe try some troubleshooting steps and see if I, if I can fix the solution without swapping out the SSD. I'll still keep the new SSD because, you know, why not? But still, it's an interesting problem for me, and I think this is a problem that other people could have. So it would be nice to solve it without throwing money at your server, even though I got these SSDs on sale for like $70. So that's why I have a few of them. But hey guys, as always, thank you for watching. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. If you have any, again, comments or questions or anything, recommendations on this, leave them down below. As always, like and subscribe and have yourself a good night.